Okay. Uh, so welcome everybody to uh, to Land Show and Elbow School. Um, today we have a difficult topic uh, is elbow stiffness, but we are very grateful to have at, uh, with us two experts, uh, Dr. Pierre Mansat and Dr. Adam Watch, who are going to present us their cases and we, ca we have the opportunity to learn with them. So welcome um, and thank you. Um, I would like to introduce you um, the participant uh, that we have today. Uh, Han Juana Mezoy, Arnaud Walsh, Marina Facho, Philip Schippers, and Roberto Parillon. So thank you, everybody, and we can start whenever you want. So hello, everybody. So the goal of the webinar is to uh, discuss cases with the panel, but also with the participants. You can ask questions through the, the chat. So I will start with um, the first case. So it's a, a young girl. She is uh, 18. Uh, she uh, fell from a horse in July of uh, 2018. She had a right elbow trauma. You can see the, the picture of the, uh, of the elbow after the trauma with a radial neck fracture. This fracture has been uh, fixed with a metezo technique. So the metezo is a close reduction uh, with the in intramedular pin from, the, from the, the distal radius. And uh, the, the pin was removed uh, five, five months uh, or four months after the, after the trauma, after the surgery. I saw this uh, this young girl uh, so less than one year after the the trauma after the surgery. She had some pain, but the main complaint was uh, uh, stiffness. She has uh, uh, stiffness with a loss of sixty degrees of uh, uh, extension and flexion limited to one hundred degrees, with pronation of sixty degrees, supination of forty degrees. The uh, the elbow was um, was uh, was stable uh, at uh, at clinic. So I asked for uh, for new X ray. You can see here uh, AP view and lateral view of the elbow, and you can see here a, a CT scan with three D reconstruction. And you can have a, a view of this uh, of this elbow. So, uh, Juan, can you describe this uh, this X-ray, the CT, and and uh, tell me what do you think about the, the, the origin of the etiology of this stiffness? Yes, she was 19, right? You told me? Yes, 18, yeah. 18, sorry. Yeah. Well, on the, on the X-ray view, on the anterior posterior view, we can see that the joint line seems well preserved, uh, at least the ulnomeral joint. And we also can see we have like a fragment, like a tear in the medial epicondyle. And the proximal radius head seems to have healed the fracture. It doesn't seem to have a signs of malunion. And then we can see on the lateral radiograph, uh, there is also the joint is congruent. We could see that. And on the CT scan, again, we can see that like uh, attachment of where the, the bundle of the MCL would be, which uh, it seems like it's a torn apart. Okay, so uh, what could be the etiology of the stiffness? Is there bone impeachment somewhere? Is there, what do you think? It could be also due to instability, maybe in this case, as the, the MCL uh, its origin is uh, in that part, maybe also it's due to instability in this patient. But, but I can the, see. But the elbow it, is stable. 
There is yeah. no uh, valgus laxity, no okay. posterior lateral. But instinct. I can I can see any bony uh, issues or in intrinsic issues that could um, mean the stiffness of this patient. So maybe it's more of the soft tissue uh, mm -hmm. surrounding the joint that is causing most of the stiffness in this case. But let's go back to the first uh, X-ray. You see, there is no uh, medial condylar uh, or epicondylar fracture. Uh, this is normal. So the ossification is could be the an, an injury of the MCL who uh, who heal with uh, ossification, but is, she's not stable. So for you, it's mostly an extrinsic contracture. Any other opinion from the the group? I wondered if it could be heterotopic ossification, maybe, because on the first X-ray, I think we could not see um, a tear on the medial side of the elbow. Mm -hmm. And now she's got this ossification here, maybe of the MCL. Yeah, it could be. Here you have the the, the, the CT AP view. We can see the John line, we can see the radial head, we can see the, the ossification medially. And here is a sagittal view. It can also be, to some extent, um, as always, as we can tell right now from the CT, a capsular impingement, um, because um, that, like the elbow capsule, it, it reacts always to to any kind of fracture, and it, it's mm -hmm. very prone to to capsular and thickening. Um, so it can always be, to some extent, um, capsular. So, how is the ulnar nerve here? Well, the nerve is normal. There is no sign of uh, ulnar neuritis. It's stable and no sign of uh, neuritis, no deficit. So, what about treatment options? Nothing. You say we cannot do anything for you. You send her to a therapist to try to to stretch his, her elbow, you prescribe the static orthosis, you uh, indicate an arthroscopic release or an open release. What do you think? What will be your, your prescription, your discussion? If we say... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think that, first of all, we, we need to be clear about what is the theology of this. Uh, yeah. Right now, I'm really not having, having it clear. Um, in, the, in the instance of a, being a capsular release, as it was saying, like, uh, sorry, a capsular contracture, that it can be, that it can be a reaction in this uh, high traumatic uh, fall from the, from the, from the horse and the reaction to the surgery and all that. So, yeah, I mean, we can think about uh, the time and if this, and the time that it has been stiff and if the pain, uh, it's a factor here. And I think it's not a factor, it's only it's only the stiffness, right? Yeah, that's a good, good comment. Uh, I saw this, this uh, young girl less than one year after the trauma. So it's uh, uh, eight months after the trauma. So it is less than one year. So I think you, uh, you comment is really um, interesting. So if you think it's an extrinsic contractor, what will be your your uh, proposal? Well, yeah, yeah. So if, if 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 it's an uh, extrinsic contractor, then with a eight month without any type of 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 uh, improvement of the range of motion then I think it, it could be a good idea to make, to make a release in, in her because it could be uh, secondary to, to anything. So, yeah. 
So surgical release, arthroscopic. Uh, well, I, I think that in, in this case, it could be more uh, trustworthy if it's an open release, but I know it can be done by arthroscopically. So, uh, I, I think that it, it should be done if, if you have the, the right uh, quality or, or experience to do it. Okay. Uh, other opinions? I'm, I would uh, try in the first uh, case to do like an intensive uh, conservative treatment first that give her some months uh, to do a controlled uh, um, rehabilitation program with uh, static adjustable orthosis and physical therapy and see if she wins and gains any extension. And if it does, doesn't work, I would go for an arthroscopic release, uh, sorry, an open release. I wouldn't do it arthroscopically because I think apart from being more technically demanding and I'm not that experienced. And I think also if you have to take out that uh, ossification in the medial side, you will go very near to the ulnar nerve. So in order to decrease the risk of uh, ulnar injury and also due to the, um, the hitch is so limited in, in extension that you would probably need to decompress or transpose that nerve. So I think that would go in favor of an open release, although you could also do it arthroscopically. Okay, so first conservative during what three months, four months? I would try at least six months six of months. conservative treatment, and obviously um, see the progress. If in four or five months there's no progress on her motion, then you can give up the, uh, that treatment and go for a surgery. Okay, Arnaud, are you agree? Uh, I agree. Uh, I think I would do conservative as long as, as she's gaining in range of motion. If, if at six months she still continues to improve, I would keep going. And on the contrary, if at, at one month or, or two months, if she has done no, no progress at all, maybe and she's motivated with surgery and or improving, I think I would discuss with her about the surgery. Okay, so for me, it was uh, mainly an extrinsic contractor uh, with uh, retraction of the anterior capsule. So uh, I go for conservative treatment with uh, static orthosis, uh, especially at night and uh, with uh, therapy during the day, very light therapy to control pain and only um, uh, orthosis in extension uh, at night for three months. And so very, uh, you know, this is uh, after five months of treatments. So she regains a lot of extension. She had only 20 degree uh, of uh, deficit of extension with uh, more uh, flexion, uh, with functional pronosupination range. And you see this uh, range of motion stay quite almost stable after after four months. I saw this girl until two years post-treatment with this uh, functional range of motion and quite good uh, pronosupination arc. And you see in this uh, example, when the patient is stiff with uh, mainly an extrinsic, con an extrinsic contractor, when you put your, sorry, when you put your, your spleen and the same, the same day, at the same moment, you can see here, you can extend the elbow. And the goal is to go to from, for, uh, from a, an elastic deformation to a plastic deformation, to an elongation of the capsule. So I think it uh, it's, can be a good option when you are sure that this is a quite uh, uh, acute stiffness, mostly extrinsic. And you can start this protocol before uh, doing surgery. And do you do uh, the orthosis is working only in flexion and extension? And no. then, yeah, you can you can do both, but it's very uncomfortable to do it in flexion. So usually, I, I keep only this uh, spleen for extension at night, and I let the, the patient move during the day with some uh, therapy uh, with the physio 
uh, working on flexion and extension at the same time. But and pronosupination as well? And pronosupination, for sure. Okay. James, right. Okay. Adam, any comment? I think it's a great, uh, a great outcome uh, for this patient. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the um, the question is: At what point uh, we feel that that uh, the use of a of a static splint is not going to improve uh, improve the movement? There is evidence that that in earlier uh, time points of intervention, you get better improvements with the use of splinting. But actually, what you see, if, if you look at the studies that, that are reported on this, what they're showing is that actually everybody ends up in the same same range. So what you're seeing that that greater gain in early intervention is often because uh, you're just watching the natural history. It's just you know that they've got more to gain, and therefore you see a bigger improvement. But this is at eight months uh, where you would expect them to have plateaued and and uh, clearly you've achieved uh, a significant uh, improvement in, in, in range of movement and therefore uh, hopefully function too. I, I agree. I choose the option because it was less than one year after the trauma. So it was for me quite uh, recent. And I, I, I start with a three months protocol and I saw the... Uh, I saw back this uh, this girl just after three months, and she she improved. So I, I decided to uh, to go on with this protocol. So I try to follow this patient every three months. But uh, I think the, the the result is quite good because it was interesting and because it was recent. So I agree with you. So I stop to share my screen, and you can start with one of your case you are mute adam uh i was just saying that uh, there are some, a few questions in the q a are any of those for pierre while i bring up my uh, presentation or not no okay so um uh, thanks very much, Pierre, for that. So, so um, this is a lady who, a, a forty-five-year-old uh, female, uh, with uh, who's a healthcare assistant. Um, obviously, there's a theme tonight. Uh, you don't all, you, you don't have to fall off a horse to get a stiff elbow, but uh, it's not a, it's not a mandatory requirement. Uh, but this is another uh, patient who's fallen from a horse four years previously. These are the radiographs. Um, uh, and um, she presents with, uh, she had a closed reduction. She had splinting uh, in a, a back for four weeks uh, and then mobilization. Um, and uh, she presents at four years with history of ongoing locking of the elbow, range of movement from 30 to 140 uh, with full pronation and supination. So, uh, and, and that's her post uh, injury radiograph, so showing congress reduction. Any um, uh, thoughts about the uh, initial management and, and contributions to stiffness? So, uh, Roberto? Yeah, uh, I mean, when, when, when uh, there's a when there's a traumatic dislocation, obviously, we need to, to, to find for some. Uh, bony uh bony lesions that could uh could be not seen and could be in mild union and then go to uh, uh posture arthritis or uh, stiffness because of, of post traumatic arthritis so i think that's important and then uh i think it's important to watch and to test the stability of the elbow so uh in in different range uh, of motion so the patient don't be apprehended uh, on the conservative treatment and can just uh, develop a, um, in the future a stiff elbow is it necessary to immobilize a, a simple elbow dislocation does it make a difference uh, to the recovery of range of movement well uh there's there there's uh some some literature that it's uh trying to 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 sell that you can even 
be only like uh, with only a sling for a couple of weeks, like I think two weeks, it could be uh, enough. Uh, I don't know if if is if that's the like the correct way of, of doing it. Uh, I, I would love to to hear your your take on this. Uh, I feel a, bit, a little bit scared on just leave like that and elbow stiffness, but I know sorry on elbow's location, but I know that uh, it could be done. Okay. Does anybody else have any uh, comments on that? So uh, is anybody familiar with the FUNC-C trial from Denise Eigendahl? A randomized control trial of, uh, of immobilization versus uh, um, immediate mobilization of uh, simple elbow dislocations, um, which showed a quicker recovery of movement uh, in the early mobilization group. No, uh, no uh, instability issues. But these are in elbows that were determined to be stable before entering the trial. Uh, following simple dislocation. So it, it's generally better to get them moving. But the, we're now four years down the line. Um, the question is, how would you assess uh, this, Arnul? Uh, uh, I would assess the ulnar nerve, first of all. You already said okay. rendered motion. Yeah. I would there's, no, uh, there's no neurological deficit. Okay. Uh, then the brain, range of brain radiographs are unchanged from the initial uh, post uh, reduction radiographs, so there's no signs of heterotopic ossification. Uh, it looks like a congruent uh, reduction. Okay, uh, I would also uh, look for pain if she's painful during range of motion, during the mid range of motion, or at the extreme flexion or extension and or extension maybe. So she had no pain through the range of movement uh, observed. Um, uh, the, uh, so 30 to 130. Okay, and I would also um, ask her how is she bothered with the elbow, if she can manage, and how can she live with such a range of motion? Because um, she's been like that, I guess, for four years. And yeah. That's a pretty long time. She's not painful. It's yeah. what some would her call. Concern, uh, yeah, her main concern is the episodes of uh, of locking of the elbow, um, okay. which are painful when that when that happens. Okay, um, so I guess I would ask for imaging after that. What imaging? Um, I would start with a CT scan of the elbow. And okay, looking... well, what, what are you looking for? Uh, I think Arno's uh, frozen. Uh, he, either he didn't like the question or he doesn't know the answer. So, uh, will uh, uh, Philippe, do you want to uh, tell me what you think? Well, it, it, it somehow points that like, there is something that is blocking her, her range of motion at some circumstances. And I want to obviously get some CT scan to find any loose bodies um, because the, the, the history is, is pointing towards something that's blocking her, her joint and then she has to shake it off and then things get better. Um, so maybe there was some little fracture or the very tip of process that got fractured and that is now um, inside the joint and giving her this locking episodes. And that's why when I get CT scan, have a 3D reconstruction and be able to find if, if present any um, loose bodies. Or maybe they so are chondral loose bodies and we need to get an MRI as well. So if we don't find anything on CT scans, MRIs. So you would do a CT scan first. And if that was uh, if that was normal, then you might proceed to an MRI scan. What's in your differential diagnosis apart from uh, loose bodies? What else can cause uh, locking symptoms? Um, joint incongruency. Um, in, in instability um, and um, any synovial um, impingements. Um, yes, okay. I, I guess. Uh, so so uh, if uh, if you were thinking uh, that instability was in your differential, what what investigation would you want for that? Um, well, the. Um, well, the MRI, as we said, then the clinical exam, um, and um, 
so if you've got a uh, um, uh, well, let, let's uh, stick with the clinical examination first. Can you describe to me exactly what you'd be looking for on clinical examination? Well, I'd, I'll st test um, collateral um, collateral ligament uh, stability at different um, levels of levels of extension of flexion, and um, if the radius radial hair was, for instance. Uh, like if you could move it posterior anteriorly, um, if she had any signs of apprehension. Um, can, can you describe to me exactly how you would do that? Um, you're, I always you're, 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 just, you're describing the posterior draw test, aren't you? Exa exactly, exactly. Yeah. Describe to us how you do that. Um, well, I I have the the, the patient. Um, in like like as if I wanted to perform um, shoulder uh, elbow arthroscopy, I have his hand lying down like like, um, like this, so relaxed, and then I would try to um, try to get a grip of the the radial head and try to move it anterior or posteriorly. And if she's complaining of pain or apprehension, and that's when I would usually say um, the test is positive. I think, but um, I can't remember for sure that there is a test described as well. If you move the elbow behind behind the head, but I'm I'm not sure. Yeah, you, you can do it with a patient lying supine and f flex the shoulder to ninety, so the arm is above the head, uh, and then you stand at the head end, and and uh, you can do the the posterior draw in that position, and that you, that enables you to get the patients very relaxed, relax the muscles because if they have instability, there will be apprehension. Um, and but it, does instability cause stiffness? The capsular reaction to instability, the, the, the elbow joint is just not, it, it's a very stiff joint. So like the compartments are super, super tight. And um, then the, the capsular reaction towards instability uh, is I think the main drive force behind. Yeah, it's, it's not just that, actually, it's, it's an effusion in the elbow that's often secondary to, to instability that causes, uh, causes uh, stiffness, uh, and it causes a symmetrical loss of range, range of movement, fairly typically, so you lose about the same amount of flexion and extension when you have an effusion, and the elbow, as the effusion gets worse, the elbow heads towards about 70 degrees of, of flexion. So... Um, uh, we've talked about the investigations. Uh, I have to say, in my hands, in this situation, uh, an MRI or MR arthrogram is probably going to be the most useful investigation because it will show me loose bodies and it will also show me ligamentous injury or, or instability. In her case, her posterior draw sign uh, was equivocal and leaning towards a positive test. And this is her MRI scan. I won't be uh, cruel enough to ask you to, to report on the scan. Um, but Marina, uh, uh, do you see anything on here that jumps out at you as as abnormal? It's maybe an unfair question, but uh, is Marina there? Marina's gone. Roberto. Yeah. Oh, you're there. there. Is, uh, yeah. Uh, Mm, there is some inflammation and uh, inside the uh, the articulation. Uh, um, so there is uh, some synovitis uh, and um, I I can't see in these uh, these images uh, some heterotopic or loose bodies. Uh, I can see them. So mm, the congruency of the articulation, maybe, yeah, it's good. So it looks pretty congruent, doesn't it? And on the uh, um, on the coronal view on the uh, left hand side of your screen, uh, there looks like there may be uh, uh, an old injury to the anterior band of the medial collateral ligament at, at its distal uh, in extent. Uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but down here, uh, the, the lateral ligament complex looks pretty good. Uh, on the axial cuts, there may be something going on in the common extensor uh, uh, region, uh, but there's a congruent articulation. But on the image on the right hand side of your screen, this is the big abnormality that uh, that, that uh, stands out to me. 
one. What are your thoughts about that? This peel back of the posterior capsule. Yes, exactly. It looks like the posterior capsule is is like torn or thickened on the backside, and maybe that's the cause of the loss of flexion that this. I mean, the loss of extension that this patient is having. And so, how would you proceed then for this patient? Well, it depends on. You've got instability symptoms and the, stiffness. Yes, I mean it depends a bit on her expectations if she wants to go. Uh, she, if, I mean, if she doesn't want to be like that and maintain her, her quality of life as she has been this for years, and she wants to go to have a, another treatment, uh, maybe a surgery. So the important thing here is also apart from to assess the stiffness that could be a bit easier, let's say, because it's only thirty degrees of of extension that she has to gain. Is also to assess the instability that this patient has because you have to uh, combine the treatment in order to stop the stiffness from reproducing. So that's the, I think it's like the, like the big issue here. So, so um, you're not going to try physiotherapy in this case? Yes, yes, uh, obviously I would try. I would try first. Okay. Um, what what would, would you ask But she hasn't tried anything for years. Uh, she actually has physiother had physiotherapy. It hasn't helped. And splinting, and it hasn't helped. If, if you, uh, she, she's not tried splinting, uh, but uh, how would you splint her? Yeah, that's there's no correct way. <laughs> okay, uh, and for your physiotherapy, what would you, what would you have asked your physiotherapist to do? Physiotherapy, well, just to make a, a good muscle uh, around and to get the, the extensor and flexor tendons. Uh, firing as well as the triceps and see if it makes any benefit to her but i i'm not very very i don't think that it could make a, a big difference that yeah i, I would be equally uh, skeptical at this stage yeah. ankyne strengthening is something that's talked about uh, but no evidence uh, that of particular benefit for, for management of plri but uh, that is something that could be tried um so arthros uh, arthroscopic surgery is probably the direction you're leaning in, is that correct? Yeah. So what would you do at the time of arthroscopy? What, sorry? What would you do? What? what would you do at, in, with the arthroscopy? First of all, I would assess the, the joint. It's the best way to assess the joint, as I can see any articular damage on the MRI, but I have to see it well on the, or any loose bodies, but I have to see it well on the arthroscopy. And then I would also assess the stability of the joint uh, in the during the arthroscopy, and see how stable that joint is. Uh, and I would uh, do a capsular release also in that part. But the big thing is that I don't know about the uh, what I would I'm going to see in terms of instability in that scope to see if I have to fix it also. Yeah. So so this is her uh, arthroscopy. You can see some chondral damage because of the length of time she's had symptoms um, and uh, the ga gapping of the ulnar humeral joint. Here's the radial capitella joint, uh, which uh, you can see the anterior rim of the radial head, and that's that's pathological. Uh, you shouldn't be able to see this from, that from the lateral compartment. Um, and uh, Roger Van Ries has described a reefing uh, technique, uh, which is what we used in this case. For the sake of time, I'm going to skip over that, but... Uh, um, shall I go on to this, Pierre, and then hand back to you? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No problem. So, uh, so this is a thirty, a, a quick, hopefully a quicker case. Um, Thirty-one year old uh, female teacher uh, who had an injury from a road traffic accident, uh, which was twelve months prior to this. Um, she had uh, osteosynthesis elsewhere. Range of movement eighty to ninety degrees of flexion, so just a ten degree arc of movement. Uh, um, supination, 70 degrees, pronation, 70 degrees, uh, but pain, pain less through that, uh, through that arc of movement. Uh, how would you uh, proceed, uh, Roberto, with this one? Hey, it's one year ago, right, uh, the, the surgery? About that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, she, she's very limited with uh, that range of motion. She's one year now. 
uh, I would like I, I would love to to assess the the construct and the stability of that screws in the lateral part and in the medial part. Uh, I would love to after doing uh, the the physical examination. I would love to uh, um, ask for a CT scan to to watch what's happening in the in the con in, in the joint line because with these uh, X rays I'm not very sure about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so her, her um, ulnar nerve uh, function, there's no deficit on examination, passively, actively, there's no uh, different uh, in the range of movement uh, examining her. Um, there are no signs of infection, uh, but you always need to think about infection in any of these uh, cases who've had osteosynthesis and uh, um, uh, and uh, a stiff. So this is her CT scan, uh, one slice anyway. This is her uh, um, recon 3D reconstruction. I think uh, I've highlighted the, uh, the, the, the major issues uh, and you could probably appreciate that there is some uh, non-union of the capitellum uh, on there. So what would you do in this situation? Well, uh, it, it's pretty clear that it's mechanical thing, and 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 I think I have a component of uh, of post uh, arthritic post traumatic arthritis. So uh, after assessing this and watching that the bone is healed, I think that it's, it could be a good idea to to think on take take out all the material, uh, take out all the impingement problems like the screw that uh, that you kindly highlighted there and uh, trying to to see trans up how how much uh, range of motion are we are uh, obtaining okay so uh, when you say you're going to take out all the material do you see any challenges with that yeah of course i mean it's 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 quite difficult in terms of there's a lot i mean not not the anchors for the for the lateral part that i i can see that there are some anchors there but uh, at least the screws that are impingement with the joint what's the electron plate for uh, i think it was the approach where uh i mean i, I don't know but I think that they approach the the distal uh, humerus with a with a trans olecranon or with a chevron in the olecranon, maybe. Yeah. So an olecranon osteotomy. Um, yeah. does, does that give you any challenges as the surgeon who's coming in to uh, to do the uh, arthrolysis? What about those screws on the medial column? Yeah, I, I think that those screws are in the CT scan are the ones that are a little bit pro more prominent and, and they are impingement and they have impingement with the ulna and with the humerus. So, yeah, it's not, I, I think that it's not an easy operation and obviously it got a lot of problems, but she's one year now and she's pretty limited in range of motion. So, um, I don't know if, if there is any options with her because it's pretty mechanical. Okay, so so how would you position the patient? How would you? What approach would you use to the elbow? Uh, I I uh, I think that it's a good idea to put it prone or put it the cubitus lateral with the elbow hanging out, like as uh, as Philip was describing, like a, an uh, uh, elbow arthroscopy, and and having an a, a posterior a posterior approach, trying to protect that uh, uh, or well, trying not to to be very aggressive again with the olecranon. And if we can take out that screws, but uh, if we need to, uh, well, I think the approach would be uh, trying to assess the joint uh, via uh, that approach and trying to, to, to make one decision by the, the range motion that we are, or we are obtaining uh, on, on each step. So would, uh, maybe Philippe, I can ask you, would you approach uh, um, through the lateral side, the remedial side? How, how would you try and, uh, do you have a, a, a process that you follow for arthrolysis? Um, it, it always depends on, on where the pathology is, but I think what you were just pointing towards is those screws at the medial column. 
if, if indeed we the, 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 they perform the um, electron and osteotomy, the direction in which they put in the screws is that is somewhat um, a problem for me if I go, for instance, towards a natural lateral approach, which could help me address these um, the the uh, the um, capitular malunion. I think that we just previously described. Um, that would be of a problem, and I'm I'm not too sure for for now how I, how I would assess. I, I would not want to do again an um, electron osteotomy. That's for sure. Um, but um, that that that's really an issue, um, and, and I think that's what you need to think about if you perform um, an, any kind of ORF um, through an over procedure is the, the, the direction in which you put in the screws, you have to think of a way to get them out later. Um, and especially in a case like this, where we have a capital or mal union, um, I, I'm not sure, I, 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 I maybe I, I guess I would go through an anterolateral approach and try to get them out, try, get rid of all the osteophytes and try to um, fix the, the capital or mal union again. Um, okay. But then, yeah, I guess. So, uh, Juan, you've got, got lucky in this case. You, you've gone through the lateral uh, column approach. You've removed the lateral screws that were clearly blocking both flexion and extension, uh, and movement's been restored. You've taken biopsies for infection, which you should always do in these cases because it could be an indolent infection, such as a P. acnes or C. acnes infection. They always do that and send those for extended cultures. You've taken the electron on plate off. Uh, and you're very satisfied with the range of movement that's been restored. What are you going to do with the capitellum? It's a non-union. And the patient so, didn't have any pain before, right? It was just the stiffness. Indeed. So I guess I could just leave it that way and see how the patient manages, because if she uh, gains motion and is, is, is still without any pain, then I think we could uh, just uh, leave it like that. Yeah, so so you'd uh, be happy to leave her with uh, um, radiographs that uh, that look like that. But is but what are her symptoms now? Like the radiograph is horrible, but if she's okay. She's now got a range from 20 to 135, nine, full pronation, supernation. Her dash score is 15 out of 100, and she's uh, back doing yoga, which is her main uh, uh, hobby. So she's so, happy. Yeah. Do you want to do anything more to her? No, not at this point. Okay. I will in the future now. <laughs> but not now. <laughs> Don't, don't treat the x-rays, treat the patient. And you can have terrible, uh, or, you know, in these post-trauma scenarios, Take out the metal work, the, the metal work that you can get out, uh, restore range of movement. Don't uh, try and anything heroic. Let, do cultures, make sure it's not infected and see how they go. And you can often be very surprised by, uh, by what, what they can achieve. So, Pierre, I'll mm -hmm. hand back to you. Uh, any questions for me before I hand back? Yeah. Did you have any plan to remove the medial screws if you had to? Uh, so I would have uh, I would have gone through a, a medial column approach to try and extract those, and if I couldn't get them out from the back, I would have extracted them uh, retrograde from for using the fluoroscopy to guide me down to the screw and extracted them uh, posteriorly. But uh, we have an, a screw extract extraction system where we can ream over a, a, a screw to to remove those, but. That it would obviously be quite destructive, and because we'd achieved range of movement on table without extracting the medial screws, we chose to leave them. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, so now it's a fifty-five years uh, man with a heavy manual labor came to see me for some pain and stiffness. It sustained a long medical treatment with uh, yes, two injections with, but with no uh, durable uh, efficiency. Yes, some uh, therapy, but with no um, 
positive results. When I saw him, a clinical exam was uh, 50 degrees of uh, extension deficit with uh, a flexion to 110 degrees. Pronosupination, 30, uh, 70 degrees of pronation, 60 degrees of uh, supination. The main uh, symptom was pain at final range of motion, mainly in extension posteriorly. There is some pain in uh, extreme flexion, but mostly in, in extreme extension. There was no pain uh, in the middle arc of motion. There is no real pain in pronospination. The, the, the neuro neurologic status was normal and the elbow was stable. So I asked from x-rays, was not good x-ray, at the time, you can see some uh, uh, bone modification. And I asked for a CT scan. So you have here the, the CT scan. So uh, Marina, what do you think of this, uh, of this patient? What uh, do you think the, the stiffness come from yeah uh, i see there is a sort of uh, cloud density uh, all around uh, the joint in the posterior part and uh, in the anterior one uh, also uh, so i think that uh, there is uh, an, uh, some there are some heterotopic ossification uh, the the congruency of the, the joint is good, so um, there is no uh, no problem uh, on the the, the joint, uh, but uh, there is uh, some fibrous uh, and uh, density high density. So I, I think that is a sort of uh, ossification on the first phase of the ossification. Okay. Natalia, what do you think? Um, are you asking me? <laughs> okay, yes. I think this patient uh, has a um, signs of primary osteoarthritis. No. So um, the physical exam, the X-rays, and the CT scan is congruent with a, a labral worker um, with a deficit uh, of um, extension and pain in the last. Uh, um, range of motion in extension and there are some osteophytes. So um, I think a stiffness could be related to uh, primary osteoarthritis. Yeah, we can see some uh, yeah, osteophyte here uh, anteriorly on the coronoids. There is some osteophyte posteriorly on the uh, tip of the olecranon. There is some uh, ossification anteriorly and posteriorly in the fossa, there is some uh, uh, arthritis here also at uh, radial uh, humeral joint. Uh, any other comments, uh, Roberto? Yeah, um, I, I agree that with Natalia in terms that I think it's an, an OA problem with, with osteophytes uh, impingement and, and at the end of the of the range of motion, that's why I think he got that problem. So yeah, I, I totally agree with, with that. So for you, it's an impingement problem. It's not a soft tissue contracture. Well, I, I think there's there, there's a little bit of both. Uh, the osteophytes of uh, absolutely going to impinge and going to limit the the, the, tol the total range of motion. But uh, at the same time, I think uh, the OA, it's a process that it's an inflammatory thing too. And, and he's a young guy for having this, uh, this OA, like 55 years old. So uh, I, I think that it's, that it's, uh, that it's a secondary problem that the, that the, con that the posterior part of the capsule is a little bit thick and it's limiting his problem. Uh, yeah. And Sorry. In yes. This case, do you ask for an arthro CT in the first place, or do you ask for a CT scan first and then an arthro CT? 
when, when there is some sign of osteoarthritis on x-ray, I ask uh, atrocity. Uh, the atrocity uh, gives you the, the amount of uh, cartilage lesions, but also uh, you, you are able to see a loose body if there is loose bodies. So for me, atrocity is uh, the main uh, exam after uh, x-ray for uh, osteo osteoarthritis evaluation. And uh, when we say that uh, there is no pain at the middle arc of motion, is for you uh, a good a good element for prognosis or does it matter? For me, it's a good prognosis. Ah, sorry. No, no, Natalia. Go ahead. Uh, yes, because uh, when there is pain in the middle arc of motion, it means that the osteoarthritis is more uh, severe. But um, so if there is no pain um, uh, in the middle arc, is uh, that means that um, um, the most part of the cartilage is uh, is preserved. Yeah, I agree. So we can see if we remove the, the impingement uh, problems, uh, the patient will have maybe more motion and less pain. So uh, again, treatment options, nothing or uh, injection, corticosteroid injection. I have no experience of PRP injection in osteoarthritis like for, for the, the knee. But maybe it works, I don't know. But here is more an impingement problem. Therapy, static arthrosis, arthroscopy release, and open release. Philippe, what would be your proposal for this uh, young guy? So um, I would opt for the arthroscopic release. Um, the reasons are he is his inflammatory component, as we just um, elaborated on, is is lesser. So um, he has the, the chances are that there is just some bony fragments, some osteophytes that are bothering him. So we could um, remove them if we are comfortable with arthroscopic procedures. We could do that arthroscopically, um, and we. So that's what I would opt for. What what would be your your goal for an arthroscopy release in this case? Uh, the bony work. Um, bony work, yeah. The bony work, um, um, assessing the cartilage status, maybe remove some small um, cartilage defects, um, and get everything clean, debride everything, and um, we make sure that we store intra op um, the desired range of motion, Did and then start early physiotherapy. Yeah. Do you think you will need to do a, an anterior capsulectomy? Um, so I, th I think you said you mentioned that the extension is this problem. So when we have an extension problem, there's something tight in the back and something uh, something tight in the front and something blocking in the back. So um, the arthroscopy is a great tool to to assess the capsular, and um, I would start with the bony work. Since we're doing sure. arthroscopy, and then if we still lack some extension, I would go for the anterior capsule. Yeah, Juan. Yeah, you agree well, with that? Yeah, I agree that we could do it arthroscopically, but also uh, I think the problem of the arthroscopic procedure in this uh, patient is that in the CT we could see there's also um, many osteophytes around the, the proximal radio uh, ulnar joint. And he also has a deficit in rotation, right? I mm -hmm. thought. Yeah. So I think that you also want to take out all those osteophytes from the proximal radio ulnar joint, doing that arthroscopically is more risky, more risky for the, um, for the posterior interior nerve. So maybe an open procedure in this case to be able to remove everything uh, more safely. Maybe mm -hmm. I would mm, prefer that, but you can do it both ways. Okay, so we choose to go for an elbow atrolysis with um, with a synovectomy, removal of some uh, loose bodies, and uh, and uh, resection of osteophyte here entirely. 
on the on the coronary you can see the synovitis there, there were some uh, astroarthritis on the radial head so we didn't do anything to the radial head just remove the, the synovitis uh, around then in uh, osteoarthritis usually there is no really um, contracture of the of the anterior capsule it's more an impingement problem so you didn't you do not need to do an anterior capsulectomy like uh, Sean O'Driscoll described you can just do a capsulotomy from uh, only from the from the humerus it's uh, interesting because you you can uh, when do when you do this uh, capsulotomy uh, from the humerus, you can reject also all the bone formation uh, on the on this sustroclear uh, fossa. So you can re remove it, um, but you don't need to do this a real capsulectomy that you will do for uh, for uh, an anterior uh, post-traumatic contracture. So osteoarthritis is a little different from uh, from uh, post-traumatic contracture. Then posteriorly, you have to uh, to clean the coronoid fossa and to um, to remove to remove the the tip of the olecranon when there is a osteophile. Remove a loose body if you have loose bodies. Uh, you do not need to go on the medial ramp to uh, to release uh, the posterior uh, collateral the, the posterior band of the co medial collateral ligament. Is again, it's not a problem of uh, post-traumatic stiffness. So usually, it's uh, quite a good indication uh, this uh, type of uh, uh, elbow osteoarthritis for um, elbow arthrolysis. So, um, six, yes, sorry. Uh, uh, you do something for the ulna nerve? No, not on this patient. Okay. Uh, he, he had all. He had one hundred ten degrees of uh, flexion. Mm. Uh, we 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 gained twenty degrees. He, he was not. Uh, he was not symptomatic preoperatively. Uh, so I didn't do anything to the nerve. Okay. So after six months, yes, less pain, no pain at final arc with. Uh, Still, uh, 25 degrees of uh, loss of extension, which was more than before, and uh, improvement in uh, in uh, in flexion with the pronosupination correct. And yeah, can I can I ask yeah. you? Sure. Would you ever do anything to the radial head? Um, and if you would, what would you? What would be your indications? And and what exactly would you? Do? I know that you have done some resection of the radial head, but uh, I so far I, I I've not performed any uh, resection. What what do you think? What is your I, well for this sort of patient? You know, fifty five manual work that uh, they often have. Uh, symptomatic radiocapital osteoarthrosis um it, this your patient didn't but but very often with they'll have a positive grip and grind test so loading of the radiocapital joints you know when they're picking up bricks and that sort of thing causes pain uh, and we have done uh, matched uh, hemi resection so we don't take out the whole radial head we just take out two birds widths of the radial head and we take more from the center than from the periphery where generally the the you've got good at preservation of the cartilage and the only uh, radio on the joint um, and that seems to help but we're, we're going to study the the patients and report the outcomes so you you keep the proximal radio hilna joint we keep the proximal yeah. radio on the joint we just decompress the radio capitella joint okay interesting interesting so natalia it's over <laughs> you are mute yeah Thank you so much, all of you. I really enjoyed. Um, I learned a lot, as always. So uh, thank you very much. And um, I hope to, to see you soon.
thank you for your participation all thank of you so much <laughs> thank you very much thank you thank, thank you, you for, the, uh, thank for you. the attendees yeah great bye 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 bye